All right, so now we're going to actually launch into working the same sort of kinematic acceleration problems just in the y-axis now. Now, whenever you're in the y-axis, aka up and down, it's never going to be constant velocity uh, unless you ha include air resistance. That's a discussion we'll have in class, maybe. Um, but in all these problems, we'll be neglecting air resistance, and it's never constant velocity because gravity is always pulling down on the object. Now, the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Negative, because in most of these problems we'll call down negative, um, al although you can choose which way is negative and which way is positive. An example of that coming up in this example problem that I'm about to do. Um, but negative 9.81 meters per second squared, that's the unit for acceleration. Now, it's not always negative 9.81. Uh, as you get up uh, past the, you know, up above the Earth's surface, it'll drop a little bit, although it's only slightly. Um, and whenever, uh, it also varies by region also, uh, based upon the altitude, based upon crust density underneath, et cetera, et cetera. But 9.81 is kind of the accepted value that is used. And then the problems work exactly the same. For example, this one, a penny is dropped off the Empire State Building, which is about 381 meters. How long, which means we're going to be solving for time, right? This is going to be a, a T equals problem over here. Um, by the way, here's your displacement S, right? Uh, how long does it take uh, to reach the ground with that velocity um, whenever it hits? Excuse me, how long does it take to reach the ground? And then secondly, what velocity does it hit? So th th there are two problems here. First, how long does it take? And then secondly, what velocity does it hit? So you, so you sketch a picture, and I have, I have a picture already done for us right over here. Uh, 381 meters, uh, ball or penny here goes down. Now, now neglecting air resistance is, is, is very important here. If we didn't neglect air resistance, this would become way too complicated for us to handle right now. Anyway, uh, let's, make a little, let's make a little variable bank. All right, first thing that you'll see that I did over here was I chose which way is positive and negative. And for the sake of trying to point this out to you, I purposefully chose down to be positive and up to be negative. So everything that goes down, for example, the displacement, which way is the penny going? Well, it's going down. So I made the displacement positive. And the acceleration, right, the acceleration of gravity goes down. So I made it positive as well. And I'm looking for time here because I'm searching for how long time, um, and, and I'm missing something. All that you were given numbers-wise was the displacement, but there's another thing you know. You know the initial velocity from the word dropped. The initial velocity is going to be zero. Now I take my variables, what I know and what I don't know, or what I'm looking for, that is, and I compare against my equation sheet, and I pick an equation. Whenever you actually look at that, you see that s equals ut plus one-half at squared is going to be the right one. Now all I need to do, and note on that, it's because you're missing final velocity. Either you can go through and look at what you have. For example, I have s, and look at the first equation, does it have s? I have a, does the first equation have a? And go through like that. Match them up. Or you can look at what you don't have. Notice the variable that's missing here that I don't have written down at all as what I want to know or what I do know. I don't have final velocity, so I have to pick an equation without final velocity. And of course, constant velocity that equation v equals s over t. That, that's no good here at all because we're accelerating. So now I just substitute in the numbers and work the algebra. And whenever I work that algebra all the way through, I come out with 8.81 seconds. I get three significant figures because of the three significant figures here in the displacement. And there isn't another uh, number that I have to worry about significant figures with. You, you can always assume that the acceleration of gravity, negative 9.81, actually is negative 9.810000 uh, from there on out, even though in reality it's not. If you were doing an experiment, you wouldn't want to assume that. But in, in problems, you, you may assume that here. So I come up with my time, 8.81 seconds for the penny to fall all the way from the top of the Empire State Building down to the ground 381 meters. So there's the first one. Oh, by the way, also notice, uh, I want to point this out, zero times t is zero, so that's why this term completely goes away when working the algebra. Next up, we actually need to solve for what is the velocity that it hits the ground with, um, aka what's the final velocity. So let's write our variable bank again. 
All right, so here's the variable bank. Uh, once again, I'd like to point out the initial velocity is zero, and people really do get a little uh, freaked out whenever they only see one number given, like a displacement. And another two things are known. Because the word dropped, you know the initial velocity is zero. And because it's free fall on the y-axis, you know the acceleration is the acceleration of gravity, 9.81. And those were numbers that were not given in the problem. That was just the displacement and the words that it was dropped. That means you know that initial velocity is zero and that uh, it's acceleration of gravity going down. Once again, I'm still calling down to be positive and up to be negative. That's why these two numbers are positive. Notice I did not include the time up here. reason I didn't want to include the time is I don't have to. This is a rounded number for significant figures. Um, and if I can use the more precise numbers that were given in the problem to solve it instead of an answer, then I'm going to do that. Now, there will be some instances where you do have to use an answer from one part to solve the next part, but this isn't one of those cases. So now I pick an equation uh, that's going to be your v squared equals u squared plus 2as because you don't have time. Now we're going to substitute, substitute in and solve. And with three significant figures, I come out with 86.5 meters per second positive because that velocity is pointing down and I said down was positive. All right, next problem. Uh, we have a girl who's going to throw a softball straight up in the air. Uh, she's throwing it with an initial velocity, 27 meters per second. And I want to know what is the maximum height that the softball reaches. I mean, this is a common thing that people do. You know, you walk outside, you're waiting for your friend. You have, you're going to throw a softball, a baseball. So you just throw it up in the air and catch it yourself. How high does it get if she throws it with an initial velocity of 27 meters per second? So delta y max, uh, we use the letter S to stand for displacement, but change in position uh, and the y axis is what that's talking about. But, but in other words, we're solving for displacement here. So let's make ourselves a variable bank. All right, so I wrote down everything that I know. I'm looking for displacement in this first part. What is the maximum height of the softball? Um, the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's get some units on that. Uh, that's because I'm choosing up to be positive in this case and down to be negative. So acceleration of gravity is always pointing down. And whenever anything's in free fall, even if it's not dropping, even if it's on its way up, still gravity, the acceleration of gravity, gravity is what's slowing it down eventually. So as, as it's on its way up, gravity is what's slowing it down. So it's still under the acceleration or under the influence of gravity on the way up. It has an initial velocity of positive 27 meters per second because I said up was positive and that's the uh, initial direction. Notice the opposite, uh, the initial velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative. Opposite signs, opposite directions. That's very, very important. Now, here's a weird concept. I set the final velocity as zero. It might be good to write this down somewhere in your notes. At maximum height, the velocity is zero. At maximum height, the velocity in the y-axis, or the up and down, at maximum height, the velocity is zero. Um, because it's slowing down, it's slowing down, it's slowing down, it's slowing down, and eventually it has to hit zero. Here's another easy way to explain that, just going back to a number line. If we threw a ball upwards and it starts out with some big positive velocity and acceleration of gravity is actually slowing it down, well, it's, the velocity slows down, it slows down, slows down, slows down, but eventually at some point in time before it turns around and comes back negative, meaning it's coming back down, remember we were calling it down negative, it actually has to pass through zero. And whenever you pass through that zero, zero velocity, that's the spot it's turning around at. And the spot it turns around at will obviously be the maximum height. We'll talk more about in the, and uh, we'll talk more about that in class as well. So now that I have my variable bank looking for displacement, what is the maximum height? I know my acceleration in the y-axis here, gravity down negative. I'm calling down negative. Uh, initial velocity up, and I'm calling up positive, 27 meters per second. I'm looking for maximum height, and because maximum height, I set the final velocity to equal zero. Anytime you're looking for maximum height, set your final velocity to be zero. Pick an equation, substitute in, and solve. I know some of you are having trouble picking any equations. We've gone through this quite a bit, so let's talk about it again, though. You can either look at exactly what you have, S, A, U, and V, I'm looking for S, um, and then match them up against your equations and see which one works. Or you can look at it in the opposite way. The only variable that is not listed in my variable bank is time here. So what equation doesn't have time? And the answer is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. 
And after working that simple algebra there, uh, doing the squares, moving it over, subtracting it over, dividing by uh, the negative 19.62, that came from 2 times negative 9.81, um, negative divided by negative positive, I come out with 37 meters, two significant figures, because that's the least number I was given. All I was given is the initial velocity, the acceleration of gravity we just know, and remember we said that can have an infinite number an infinite number of significant figures for you. So there's the answer to the first question. The second question, how long will it take before it comes back down? The way I'm gonna solve this I'm gonna, is I'm gonna solve for how long does it take before it reaches the final, uh, before it reaches maximum height. Now I, I technically could do the entire thing. I could do the up and down in one thing, but I'm just gonna do the up. Um, so how long does it take before it gets to its maximum height? That's my first step. All right, so I went ahead and I picked my, or I went ahead and made my variable bank, and now for my equation. And I find after substituting in my variables and solving that it takes about 2.75 seconds uh, to make it all the way up to the top. But that's not how long it takes to go up and back down. I want the entire trip. I want up and down. So what I need to do now is I need to double that because it's uniform. The time it takes for a ball to go up is the exact same amount of time that it takes to go down because they're both under the same influence of gravity. They both have the exact, they both have the exact same acceleration, negative 9.81, the entire time. And so I find that the total time that it takes for the ball to make it all the way up and back down is 5.5 seconds. Make sure you took great notes uh, and bring all your questions to class. We'll get those answered. Also, another thought for you on this, it's always a good thing to maybe go back and rework the example problems yourself as if you had never seen them before because then you can check your work against what's happening in the videos.